Sculpture of Home with artist Lisa Traxler. This workshop activity was supported using public funding by the National Lottery through Arts Council England. Hello, welcome to my studio. My name is Lisa Traxler, I'm a visual artist. Uh, I work in 2D collage painting and 3D sculptural form. I'd like to show you some images of my sculptures and tell you a little bit about my work before I lead you in this activity to make a sculpture. We will be making a paper sculpture of home. Here are some images of my work from recent projects. For several years, I have been exploring the connection between myself and place, how we can forge deep associations with where we live. This highlights my research of historical buildings, particularly defence architecture, which is often left abandoned in the landscape. I try and explain my thoughts and insights through my art using different materials, vitreous enamelled steel, paper and wood composites, and hand-painted collage structures. I live on the Isle of Wight. On the site where my studio is situated, there's a decommissioned World War II radar bunker, RAF St. Lawrence. I moved to this site several years ago and the history of the building and the landscape around it have become very important to my work as an artist. The connection to this site, which is also my home, became even more powerful to me during the COVID pandemic lockdowns of 2020 and into 2021. The shapes created by light and shadow of the sun following the passage of time on the bunker's concrete walls were documented with a series of photographs and drawings. This starting point enabled me to create a new set of sculptures. This is a maquette of my sculptures a maquette is a small scale model before the sculpture is made to full size, often constructed by the artist in their studio. Sometimes many maquettes are made to get the shape just right for the artist. The piece is called the ghost sculptures. It references the passing of time and history, all those that have gone before. In the stillness of the radar bunker, you can almost feel this history and I often imagine who was here and what their lives were like. Do you live in an old building? I wonder who lived in it before you. All the stories and memories of time before us. Let me tell you a little bit about RAF St Lawrence. We're in part of the building at the moment. It's a former Royal Air Force radar station and it was constructed in 1941 as part of a World War II coastal defence programme, codenamed Chain Home. Radar could be used to detect and locate incoming enemy aircraft. It gave early warnings of approaching raids. It worked by sending out radio waves, which would bounce off solid objects at a distance, enabling operators to estimate the height and direction of an approaching raid. This site played an important role during the Second World War providing early warnings of incoming bombing attacks. The station consisted of a transmitter and receiver block with two wooden aerial towers alongside with a height of over 30 metres each. All that is left today of the towers are these concrete and steel stanchions. The station was completely covered over with earth to give added protection and the site was operational 24 hours a day. By D-Day in 1944, St. Lawrence was plotting more than 2,000 outward aircraft. By 1947, it was described as non-operational. The ever-changing light cast beautiful geometric forms, particularly across the exterior walls of the blast wall area of the bunker. This area is open to the elements, but sheltered on all sides by thick textured concrete elevations. These walls were hand-built and show the lines of the wooden shuttering used 
to enclose the concrete whilst it's set before being removed. On a clear day, when the sky is a deep blue, you can sit in stillness within this area and watch the clouds scudding above. It has brought to mind the works of artist James Turrell, particularly his sky space chamber with its aperture above open to the sky. It's a very calming space. I'm particularly interested in our connection of the built environment within a landscape setting. And this is where our sculptures of home come in. Taking inspiration from where we live will help us create our own home sculptures, particularly at this moment in time when home is so important to us. Our home is our place of safety, refuge and sanctuary. It is our place where we are shielded from the elements, where we are fed and rested. It is also where we create memories. How do you feel about your home? Has it changed for you during this unusual time we find ourselves in? Do you feel drawn to a particular room in your home? I feel very fortunate to have my home to retreat to. So for our sculpture, we will need a few materials. And I've tried to choose items that we may find easily at home. So we start with a sheet of A4 paper, just plain paper. Then we also need a sheet of cardboard, either from um, a cereal packet or from packaging or just a thin sheet of card that you might have in a sketchbook. Alongside that, we will need just a regular pencil, a black marker pen, if you have that, and then either some paints, felt pens, pencils, something to create a little bit of colour and a pair of scissors to cut out. Let's start by looking at our home. Perhaps we can go outside and walk around our house or flat or wherever we live. Look at the architecture of the building. My radar bunker has a blast wall as part of its design. A blast wall is a barrier designed to protect something or someone within it from the effects of explosion, accident or some other disruption. Perhaps we feel our homes have become our blast wall our barrier of protection from the outside world. Look at the outline of your building. This is its silhouette. Think of this outline in shapes. Perhaps the roof is triangular. The walls are long panels. The windows are square. Start drawing this onto your sheet of A4 paper. This will be the outline of your sculpture. Let me show you. If you can't get outside, perhaps look out through an upstairs window across the rooftops of other buildings. Use the shape of the houses around you and draw a simple outline. Let's look at this street scene. Imagine drawing a line down through the building. Now take your A4 sheet of paper and translate that imaginary line in pencil. So I want to go down onto the paper, across the rooftop, down past the window, underneath the window frame, and down to the front door. Round the front door, across a little wall at the front there, down some steps, down the front steps there and the wall, across to the pavement and down and off the paper. Cut this shape out. This is your template to draw around. You can use the leftover paper for other drawings later. Place the template onto the edge of your sheet of cardboard or your cereal box and then draw around it. Once you've done that, 
flip your shape over and draw around it again. Do this one last time. You will now have three edge lines across your sheet of cardboard. Cut along the lines to create two shapes. And then thinking about your building, add some doors and windows and cut these openings. Now it's time to add a design to your sculpture pieces. Think of the building and how the doors and windows line up to form a grid. Draw this grid onto your cardboard pieces. Cut a slot into each shape, about halfway down. Look at the colours on your building, the brickwork and the paintwork. So for this one, I've chosen the grey of the brickwork and a creamish colour here for this paintwork. Black for the drain pipes. Some orange, as I imagine some of the bricks would be on the roof near the chimneys. Some white, which picks up some of the snow that's on the building and the paintwork around the windows. And then I've chosen blue because I'm imagining there's going to be a lovely blue sky when I come to make my sculpture. Once you have decorated all sides, you can slot your sculpture together. Slot together and you have created your sculpture of home. Add some more to create a group of sculptures. Look at the shapes the edges of your sculptures make as they stand together. Thanks for taking part in this workshop. I hope you've enjoyed it. <laughs>